Welcome everybody to this um, introduction, um, to this open of the first Data Connect Malaysia. Um, my presentation will be a bit short, I mean, quite short compared to the, what our speakers today will present. And I want to just to um, introduce you to Nine Analytics platform, explain what it is, what you can do with this, so that we are all on the same page for the upcoming presentations. My name is Roberto. I am um, a data scientist on the evangelism team at NIME, and uh, I will today show you a little bit of uh, what uh, you can do with NIME Analytics Platform. First of all, do you know NIME, what NIME is? So maybe this is the first question we need to answer. And in a nutshell, NIME, when we talk about NIME, NIME is the company. Um, we have offices in Europe and the US. And we, have, we are very proud of having a very close size of a network of universities and research institutions. Uh, most notably, one of the latest addition to this uh, network is uh, the University of, of Harvard, um, with which we developed um, a recent um, extension for Genalytics. So if you, if you uh, yesterday was the release of our, uh, our uh, let's say, semester release of the software. And so if you now go to the download page of NIME, you can, uh, you can download version 4.7, and there you can install this new extension for Geoanalytics. Uh, we also have a global network of partners, so wherever we don't have offices, but we have partners that can help us, you know, get in touch with our community. And NIME, as a company, uh, produces a low-code, uh, uh, an open-source and free software, uh, which is NAM Analytics Platform, uh, with which you can gather, wrangle, model, visualize your data, but also has a commercial complement, which is NAM Business Hub, um, that is used by business to deploy, manage, consume, and optimize workflows. We will see in the next slides a little bit more how this, how the NAM ecosystem uh, works. So NIME software has one integrated ecosystem. Ecosystem, sorry, is divided into, into parts. We have NIME Analytics Platform, which is, as I mentioned in the previous slide, the free and open source software. Everybody can just go to our website and download for free. And that's the starting point for all your workflows. That's where you start creating your uh, data science solutions. So you can use the software to, uh, for basically to access data, to blend them, to transform them, and obviously to model and visualize it. And you do this um, relying um, on the core set of nine nodes, but also on a, a number of nine extensions, integration, community extensions and partner extensions. So we're also happy to uh, integrate uh, in our capabilities also what the community and partners develop. And NIME also has, and uh, as I mentioned also in the previous slide, a commercial complement, which is the NIME Business Hub. And that is used for the productionization of workflows. So when the workflow is finally created first in NIME Analytics Platform, that's always the starting point, you can deploy it to the NIME Business Hub and then um, um, use it this commercial product for, for management, for consumption, interaction um, with your workflow. And it's also a great tool for team collaboration. But who are the NIME users? Uh, this, uh, I mean, you are probably, if you are familiar with NIME, if you, ever, if you have ever downloaded NIME Analytics Platform, you're of course part of this group of users. Um, NIME software serves all data professionals uh, from business users to business analysts to data engineers, data scientists, who obviously use the software in different, in different ways, right? So for example, for data engineers, um, they usually um, they usually engage in uh, ETL processes or they work more with big data or uh, they try to, uh, for example, create the right data architecture so that other professional, other data professional in the team can take it from there. Or uh, if you are a data scientist, maybe you want to use um, the uh, capabilities for machine learning that NIME has. So depending on the role, there are obviously different capabilities that can be used. But something that we are very proud of uh, because of our uh, i mean nime is, a, is a, as i said is a free and open source uh, software and that has the great advantage of creating a very large and supportive community around it and we try to engage with the community as much as we can because uh, because we like it and it's also because it's uh, it's right in the philosophy of the software and 
probably the most important resource for the community to help to get help and support is the NIME forum. So if you have a question about how um, why is this node uh, giving me this problem or how do I or how do I do this uh, with this node, then the NIME forum is your is your uh, is the is the right place for for you to ask those questions. But we also uh, engage in a number of initiatives. Right to keep the community engaged and to meet the community, um, starting from um, the just NAMI challenges or from or going to um, the local for advanced data science, which is a community medium publication. We also obviously host regional meetups like the one we are doing right now, uh, and obviously, I mean, we cannot miss the chance or the opportunity to talk to our community on social media, right, on LinkedIn, Twitter. If you follow us, you uh, you're, you know this already. But another way we engage with the community is uh, via our educate, educational material, right? So we have a bunch of self-paced courses that are all for free. You just need to uh, register uh, on the on the platform, and so you go from uh, from basic proficiency to specialized to topics. But we also have a YouTube channel. Uh, that is, has plenty of educational videos and webinars and panel discussions that are there for you to uh, to enjoy. And what not, of course, we also have certifications. So if you are if you feel uh, finally ready to uh, become a nice certified user, uh, the, the very good news is the basic proficiency. So the basic the L1 certification is for free. So uh, you just go and on the website you register, you take the the the, uh, the exam and then you are issued a badge that you can share on social media. And uh, something that we're also very proud of is our Contributor of the Month program. This is a program that tries to uh, identify and award the excellent users in the community with, with whom, uh, I mean, that thanks to their work, they are basically an advancing and benefiting the entire NAM community, um, be it with blog posts or components or any form of contribution. Um, and if you are already a little bit familiar with the Nine uh, ecosystem, you, of course you have uh, met already at least once the Nine Hub or Nine Community Hub. If you don't know what that is, the Nine Community Hub is the the biggest repository of Nine workflows, extensions, nodes. There you can find uh, ready to use um, use cases uh, in the form of workflows. Um, that you can simply drag and drop into an analytics platform and start using right away or adjust to your specific uh, use case. So whenever you don't know what to start from, the NIME Community Hub is the answer. But what can NIME software do? So what can I do exactly with this, with this software? So the, it, basically the, the easy answer is, the short answer is everything. <laughs> and now we'll see a little bit more in, the, in details what you can actually do. So with Nine Analytics Platform, you can cover all the stages of the data science lifecycle. So we, you have plenty of capabilities to access data, uh, be it in the form of an Excel uh, file or a CSV file, or access databases, or retrieve uh, data from social media. So with a Twitter uh, API connector. And, or if you have a lot of data, or if you want to load and process data on um, Apache Hadoop, we have also capabilities for, uh, for to work with big data. And once you finally access and import your data into an analytics platform, usually what you want to do is to process and transform your data. Uh, and for that, we have plenty of nodes. And usually they have the color yellow. So you can see here a few of them. Uh, for example, the auto binner or the concatenate, the joiner, and there are many more um, that I'm not showing in this slide. And once you're finished your pre-processing, what comes next usually is uh, um, modeling your, your data. So for that, we have plenty of nodes that cover a very large spectrum of machine learning algorithms. Here, for example, you see the decision tree. And once you, you model your data, or you, uh, you obviously want to evaluate the performance of your model, but, uh, and you can do it either with a, for example, with a, with a score that gives you, uh, for example, the accuracy or the precision or the recall of your model, but also by a, a visualization nodes. Um, and those are uh, nodes that are written in JavaScript. So they allow some very nice level of interaction and, uh, so, and, and responsiveness. So it's very nice to visualize 
the result, for example, of with an ROC curve, let's say, to visualize the performance of your model. And the final stage, of course, is the part of deployment where you want to finally save your trained model, the model you are satisfied with, or maybe uh, create, uh, save, the, save a graph for, uh, for a report. One other very important aspect, because NIME is, um, is a, um, an integrated and open ecosystem, we don't simply look, let's say, what we can do, but also what other, other um, companies or other technology that is being developed is doing and how we can integrate that technology into our software. So here you have um, this slide, a few examples of all the possibilities that are existing out there in the space that, we, that can be integrated in our analytics platform. So, for example, we have options to integrate many different external data sources from SAP to uh, um, Salesforce to Twitter to uh, MongoDB and so on to, for example, uh, the possibility to use advanced machine learning uh, libraries and also for deep learning, for example, Keras, the Keras library or TensorFlow or uh, Wicca or H2O and so on. Um, and also, obviously, uh, for the possibility to export the result of your, of, your, of your work for deployment or for visualization in other reporting and visualization tools, for example, Power BI or Tableau or Plotly. And if you really, really, really want to uh, introduce some scripting languages, because maybe you want to, um, you know, uh, introduce the latest, uh, um, the latest model being developed, uh, of course, you have the option to do that. Um, and you can do this, for example, using R, Python, but you could also uh, do it in Java or JavaScript. So let's have now a look at, um, let's say, at uh, a closer look of what, how, how an analytics platform looks like. So in this GIF, you see, uh, uh, you have a sort of a, an idea of how you can simply drag and dropping nodes into your NAM analytics platform from what you see in the lower uh, left part is the node repository where you see you find all the nodes available in NIME. And you, as you can see, you simply drag and drop, you connect the nodes and by connecting those nodes, you create a workflow. And I will, let's say, we'll, we will look, uh, uh, we will do an anatomy <laughs> and, um, of the workflow or, or what a workflow is in the next in the next slide. So first of all, um, the basic unit of a of a nine workflow is the node. Each node performs um, each node perform an action on the data, and this action obviously can can vary. It could be, for example, in the case of that you see in the slide here, we have an Excel reader, and as you can probably uh, imagine, this node reads. Excel files. So we have nodes that do the read file, they join them, they partition or visualize them. And in this case, for example, we have several of them uh, for uh, for uh, data uh, for data reading. Then we have some joining, um, some partitioning, and then we also have, as we also saw in the previous slide, nodes for uh, to implement a machine learning model. In this case, as you can see, the decision tree, and a series of connected nodes. Uh, constitutes a workflow. And we can have workflows that are very simple, let's say, for some easy and simple ETL processes, but also very complex ones that, um, that let's say, explore uh, more the machine learning area or deep learning. So uh, the complexity really depends on the user, on how much the user wants to push it. And Another very useful part uh, or a possibility in analytics platform is the creation of components. So components, basically what they do, they encapsulate a segment, as you can see here in the GIF of a workflow, so that we can abstract easily the complexity of the workflow and make it also reusable and shareable in a very easy way with other users. So you in your organization can create a component and then give it to your colleague um, and she or he can, um, can reuse it in their workflow. And and nine, we are very happy to uh, also create those, uh, those components for our community. Um, and by abstracting this complexity and resharing it on the Nine Community Hub. And 
we can have, for example, uh, we have in fact uh, many different components that tap on visualization. Some are for AutoML, some, some other are for explainable AI. Um, the point is that we with components, you can simplify uh, a process and encapsulate it and make it easy for, uh, for others to, to use. So sharing it's easier and also um, reusing it is easier. And the final before I, I uh, wrap it up from my side, I also want to point you to some uh, real world applications because you may wonder, okay, but who actually uses NIME and what people do or what companies do with it? So that there is a <laughs> there is a, actually many answers to this question. And I would like to point you to the solutions uh, what, uh, what page on our website uh, where we have uh, solutions and stories uh, written by our partners and customers in many different um, verticals and sectors. So from the finance to the life sciences, to the marketing analytics, to the healthcare, retail, the public sector and whatnot. So um, there in this, on this, in, this web, in this website, on this page that you see here and uh, the link below, you find all the stories of how NIME and uh, the automation and the capabilities that it, uh, that it ships has helped those businesses make sense of their data. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and I will now stop sharing and leave the, um, the word to the next. Uh, thank you, Roberto. Um, just before we go to the next speaker, um, two quick things. If you have a question, please pop over to the chat and uh, in the section of the room, there you can write a quick question. Uh, either our team or the speakers will answer it. There will be chance afterwards to also speak to the speakers directly or ask us a question. Secondly, if you're still standing at the door, you might be blocking people from going in and out of the room. Um, just find a chair and then sit down, so to speak. Okay, so up next, we have our first speaker. Uh, and it's my pleasure to welcome Nicholas Unting. Uh, he will tell us more about himself and then uh, present. I think he's presenting something on machine learning. So Nicholas, when you're ready, uh, you may take the stage. Thanks. Hello and good evening. If here is evening, okay. I believe that in Germany is uh, afternoon, right? It's about around 3 p.m. Correct me if I'm wrong, okay. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me check first uh, with Shah. Uh, can I? Do you see my presentation? I uh, haven't yet, not yet, okay. Yeah. Yes, I can see and hear you clearly, thanks. Clearly, thanks. Okay, thank you very much. And thanks again for the nine team from uh, Switzerland. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Shah, Roberto, okay, for assisting me, uh, me and Dr. Elvin, uh, a lot on having this kind of event. And as, as Malaysian, we uh, appreciate that. Okay, so this, I believe that we will continue our works together afterwards. Okay, so, uh, okay, so good evening, everyone. So, uh, my name is Nicholas. Okay, and today I'm presenting about creating artificial intelligence model using nine analytic platform. Okay, all right. So, yeah, today I, I just demonstrate. Okay, uh, I'm not going to show one by one, but I show you what should we do in order to build a very uh, quite uh, useful machine learning for us to do a forecasting model okay so uh let me introduce myself at first place okay, let me check first uh, okay all right so uh i'm on behalf of uh, napsoft okay and also utsm okay so currently uh, i'm uh, having my phd in utm in civil engineering and i embarking into a data science since five years ago okay actually in my phd also i already involved in machine learning to do the optimization of my material design okay and currently i'm a founder and director at napsoft okay and i'm also a nine trainer okay and certified by hrd Corp, previously known as uh H hrdf okay previously in malaysia and currently, I'm also work as a senior lecturer and researcher at ETHM, whereby the teaching subject that I taught in university is data science and application. 
computer programming, structure analysis, and I'm doing a research related with leakage detection using the AI. Okay. And previously also I worked with Ministry of Education uh, from 2019, okay, as a consulting committee for the big data projects. All right. So uh, let me introduce NAPSOF is uh, have an official partnership with NINE. So we are in Malaysia to provide a technology provider in Malaysia, consultation and professional education. So we build, we do training in collaboration with NINE. Okay, so, uh, and I hope that afterwards we can discuss furthermore if anyone would like to join the training environment, how can we explore and uh, uh, knowledge together in Malaysia? Yeah, we can do that afterwards later uh, during the networking session. Okay. All right, uh, recently in this year, I released some new books, okay, and together the, the editor of my book is Dr. Elvin and some of the reviewer also, okay, is from Nine themselves, okay. So uh, the inspiration of me to write is I love reading, I love teaching, and I love to spread the knowledge. Okay, that is the mission. Okay, this is my team who are contributing a lot to the as a part of reviewer team. Okay, so thank you very much, and thanks also to the others that maybe behind the scene which are not uh, provided. I did, I did in the. So basically this book will teach you A to Z about how the data science and how do we do a data science using a nine, eh? right? So uh, we have uh, about nine chapters, okay? And focus, what we are going to tell you today is uh, machine learning. One of the machine learning model under a classification application. Eh? All right, so without further ado, let us, uh, we focus on our agenda, our uh, main, uh, presentation for tonight is how we can use nine analytic platform as our intelligent tools for artificial intelligence modeling okay so before we dive into okay for those who are very new here for those who maybe this is my first time to understand what is data what is artificial intelligence before you embark deep down into ai so we have to understand first what is data science okay so we know that Data science is a multidisciplinary scientific knowledge and skills to extract valuable insights from data. So you need to have a knowledge, okay? What kind of knowledge? You have a max, max, max knowledge, okay? A domain knowledge in your field. And also you need to have a, some sort of programming skills, okay? Programming skill. And one of the tools that we can do for a programming is a knife, okay? So I always tell people, if Python, you are copying code. In Nine, you are copying Node. So this is a kind of, you, you change from C to N, okay? So you copy the Node for, uh, for the Nines, okay? So data science apply the uh, modern analytic and analysis technique yeah, to extract information and hidden pattern in your data set, okay? And it's a scientific process to propose actionable insight. So this is the main game of uh, the main game of the data science, okay? And when we go deep into more, more, uh, more valuable information, I mean, if you want to get more advanced in data science, okay? So that's, we are going to understand a little bit on artificial intelligence, okay? So this is the next wave of digital reality, okay? I, I, I believe uh, some of the house, okay, uh, I mean, they install a very intelligent system, okay. It's not new, but it's getting, uh, it's become more progressive these current years, okay. And I believe because of 5G in the futures, okay, the, the, the wave become more rapidly, okay, the innovation, the technology become more rapidly innovated due to the artificial intelligence, okay. So, you see, the terminology of AI is a simulation of human intelligent process by a computer system, okay? So our intelligence being simulated through a computer system which program with advanced algorithm. For example, the deep learning technology. Even the most simplest one we can see later on in our example here, okay? So it is a technology that allow computers and machines to interact with human, okay? So I believe that everyone has a smartphone and if you ask 
your, uh, for example, series, okay, he will try to reply you back with some sort of answers. Okay, so this is the way we are interacting with a computer. Okay, uh, this is a kind of new wave of a digital reality into a physical world. Okay, so the next, the last one is, is leverage computers and machine powers to mimic the problem solving and decision making capabilities of the human mind. For example, if I want to get from point A to point B, okay, so I don't know the direction, so I can use application, Google Maps, for example. So by using this AI application, okay, it can give me a recommendation and help me to solve my problem. So you see the more advanced field of view we can see in the construction industry, in medicals, okay? So I believe that this is the next wave that we have to get prepared for, okay? So artificial intelligence, they have a four uh, kind of uh, features to say that is an AI, okay? The first one is sense, okay? It sense means that, for example, it uh, when we drive a autonomous vehicle, Okay, Tesla is one of autonomous vehicle. I, I I can see that in the road, the road, the road, they already use that in Malaysia. Okay, I believe that if the price will getting down after this next five years, I believe uh, Malaysia will prefer to use uh, electric cars. Okay, hopefully. Okay, so you see in autonomous vehicle, we have a sensor. Okay, a sen sen sensor to traffic light. There is a human in front of that. Okay, this is some sort of a very simple example you can see. Okay, and the AI also allow the computer to think. Okay, the computer to think. For example, when I ask series, what is the two plus two? Okay, the computer will think and give me a reliable answer. How that computer can think? Because previously it's been trained before. Okay, it's been trained with enormous amount of data. Even recognition, for example. Okay, I believe that in immigration nowadays, they use a facial migration, okay, to map our face. So that system will try to capture, sense, and think whether this person is matched with the bio data and the bio, bio I mean, bio, biographic information that has in that system, okay? And also it deliver you acts, and then the last one will learn, okay? That make the system intelligence, it learn. Okay, from day one of that system being invented. Okay, all right. So you see in the big pictures, yeah. So artificial intelligence has been uh, has been uh, widely talked. Okay, I think since 1950s. Okay, I think this one is 1950s. Yeah. So these people talk about AI a long time ago, but we haven't yet experienced that at that time because of the limitation of technology. The sharing knowledge is not as fast as we experience right now. Okay. For example, if I want to learn something about AI, I just can search into the YouTube, okay, or I Google it, and I can get the information. Okay. And even in our palm. Nowadays, information in our hand. Okay. And when uh, in starting 1980s, people talk about the machine learning. Okay. People talk about machine learning. And these days, people talk about the deep learning. A deep learning is a new breakthrough that drives the AI boom in our uh, world these days. Okay, so you see, machine learning is a part of artificial intelligence. So we do a machine learning means that we do a, a, a artificial intelligence. All right. Okay. So machine learning is something that you train the algorithm. Okay. For example, you have the algorithm using a historical data. Okay, you have a historical data, you can obtain that through a web scrapping, you can collect that through an experiment, you can collect it through a survey, that is historical information. information. Train, use that data to train the algorithm. Okay, and from there you will get a model. This is what we call as an intelligence model. You can see in two-dimensional problem, for example, in this case, yeah, a simple linear regression problem, the model can visualize as a straight line. But when we go beyond that, when we have more multiple of factors, more than two factors, we can't visualize that in graph anymore. 
So please, when we dive into the machine learning, not to think about everything is graphing, okay? Because everything is not about the graph anymore. Everything is about how good is the model. We have to measure it with a different kind of technique and methodology, okay? All right, so what you need to, uh, 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 to what's the ingredient there? Okay, the first you need to have a data, as I mentioned earlier, the historical data. Second, you need to have a machine learning or deep learning algorithm. Okay, and the last one, you need the programming tools. Okay, so without the programming tools, you, it's very difficult. Okay, I mean, it's quite slow and uh, I think very less people do a, do a, do a competition. Uh, I mean, using a hands work nowadays, I believe that. Okay, so otherwise, uh, we can't, even the simple linear regression, if you try to do, if you have a hundred uh, rows of data, it's quite tough for us to build a model, okay, using the uh, OLS algorithm, yeah, ordinary least square, okay. All right, so, yeah, to understand the process, this is the process, even if you purchase the book, uh, everything will be described in detail, the process, okay. We have to start with the data preparation. Okay, we have to start with data preparation. For example, you import a data set. Okay, where is the data set come from? Maybe from your local repository. Maybe from your uh, database system. Okay, maybe from your data lake. Okay, so uh, sometimes this data preparation is done by the data engineers. Okay, data engineers also can be done by data scientists. And then you can do a preliminary exploration, data treatment, and feature selection under this data preparation, okay? And then after that, you go for data pre-processing. Okay, what have categorical variable? If you have any categorical variables, okay, select the variable, partitioning, normalization. Then when you complete all this process, you can use it to train the algorithm. So then after you train the algorithm, you can generate the model, okay? And the model, we, we, we cannot instantly use that model. We have to evaluate whether that model is good or not. Okay, so you have to evaluate the performance of the model first using a few indicators. Okay, and these indicators is depend on the problem that you have. If you have a classification problem, you need a, uh, you need a R squared, for example. Uh, no, no, a, a regression problem, you need an R squared. Okay, if classification problem, you use a confusion metric. For example, you compute the accuracy, the precision of the model, okay? If the model is not okay, you need to do the optimization, okay? It means that you have to reconfigure, okay? Re-enter re, re, re new values into your system, into the hyperparameter or parameters that you set in your algorithm, okay? All right, and if okay, then you can save the model, all right? So, let's back to the nines, okay? So all these things, as I mentioned earlier, okay, all this process can be done from A to Z using a nine analytic platform, okay? And you can see here, this is a group node. Let me uh, open my nines, okay? So this is a nine interface. So some of the, uh, this is the way I'm organizing the way uh, my, uh, what is it, my software to be appear. Okay, sometimes people will display the outline, everything, but I remove that. I just display the most important for me, okay? For example, I need to have this region, nine explorer over here, okay? This is important for me to access the file of the safe, uh, the one that I saved into my nine expository, okay? Then another one is a nine repository, and the node repository, sorry. Okay, so what is the node repository? Okay, as a Roberta mentioned earlier, okay, maybe I repeat it again. Okay, so the main component that we work, okay, with nine is a node. Okay, if you are using a, a conventional programming, you do a code, the component is using a code. Now that code being the group of code, of code, of code time, okay, 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 okay. okay. Okay, a CSV reader node. And the CSV reader node is to import the data set in the form of CSV file. Okay, and you see in this node repository, it group into a few, few, few group. Okay, and under this group node, you can see the subgroup node. For example, read. Okay, you can find others. You can find 
uh, other reader node that you can use to import the data set. Okay, but we talk about machine learning. Okay, when you talk about, 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 okay, so where is the group node for machine learning? So the group node for machine learning is available at analytics group node here. Okay, under the group, under analytics group node, and then you can see here mining. So over here, you can find uh, varieties of uh, machine learning group node, uh, nodes available here. For example, if I want to do a, a predictive analytics for, uh, for a regression problem, so where is it? Okay, we can find it under the, the polynomial regression node. And to use this learner node, to use this, use this, use this node, that there is a two type of the node, the the the, the uh, machine learning node. The first one is the learner node, and the second one is the predictor node or for polynomial problem. The predictor. Node. Okay, the one that we will train is the learner node. All right. So uh, I think I will uh, describe this in my example. Okay, for example, we want to build a machine learning model to predict whether the customer is churn or stay. Okay, so this is a data set of a bank, okay, whereby they give a credit score, geography, gender, age, and etc. And my intention is to predict the exit status. Okay, the exit status. That, that is what I want to predict. So you have to understand first, okay, the problem statement here is to have a machine learning model so that I can forecast a client behavior, whether they will sell, churn or stay. Okay, so we see here, if you see, okay, if you see, we need the, okay, there are two types, uh, this is, uh, there is another one actually, the, class, uh, the clustering problem, but we, Try to compare between classification and regression problem. You have to understand from your data set, if I want to predict the, uh, in case of this existed status, so means that I want to predict the class. So under existed, I have two classes here, churn and stay. Okay, and that's why it's called as a classification problem. So understanding this, to differentiate between regression and classification, is very important because you see if you are dealing with a regression problem you are predicting the numerical variable okay for example in this case I, case, I, case, I have to predict the price of the scanner car so this is regression problem so our problem is a classification problem because what we want to predict is categorical output all right okay so you see, uh, when I when we do a machine learning, okay, when we do a data science, so one of the most important component is to perform an exploratory data analysis. Okay, so I can divide it into two. The first one is univariate analysis and multivariate analysis. Okay, so but when we work with machine learning, when we want to do a feature feature selection, so what you should do is you want to what you want to do is to check whether there is a relationship between credit score and existed, for example. Okay, I want to measure, is there any relationship between geography and existed? Whether the geography is affecting the existed or not. Okay, so how do we decide on that? So that's why we need to categorize. Okay, when we are dealing with, uh, when we are dealing with multivariate analysis, I have three I categorize that into three analysis, uh, uh, three main analysis. The first one, first one, first one is neutral. Okay, it's a very straightforward. For example, uh, what is the effect of credit score towards the ages? That is credit score is a numerical and ages is numerical. But now, exited is a classification, uh, cl a categorical variable. Okay, so if I want to measure this, so I have to use a, a numerical, a categorical versus numerical. Okay, another one is categorical versus categorical. For example, eh, 
what is uh, will be the gender affecting the exeter can i say that female is tend to churn okay compared to uh, men okay we have to test it okay we have to test it first so how do we test this okay so we can divide it into four uh, uh, technique here uh, not four technique i mean each of these have their own techniques okay for example uh, because we are dealing with uh, categorical versus categorical and categorical and versus numerical so we can use a cross tabulation for example if we are dealing with categorical versus categorical okay and if categorical versus num numerical we can use aggregation node okay group by okay graphical technique and inferential statistic okay let me demonstrate one example of categorical versus uh, numerical okay so uh, uh, I want to change, I want to make it much bigger. Okay, I want to make it much bigger for you to see it. Okay. So this is categorical versus numerical. So I want to test whether, for example, uh, can I say that the credit score will affect that? Okay. What is the technique for me to use? Uh, that I can use to check this hypothesis. Okay, the first, if you see here, I can use categorical versus numerical group by aggregation, and even I can use graphical technique and inferential statistic. So how do we do that? Okay, the first I plot the conditional box plot. Okay, uh, this is more into a like a technique in EDA. Okay, so you see here, here, here. It is, uh, then we can proceed for machine learning afterwards. Okay, so uh, so, uh, so uh, the conditional box plot. Okay, wait for one. Okay, so you, 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 can see that the presence of the median of this data set, data set, data set, data set is based on the credit score. Okay. Uh, the churn and stay is, is, is at the same, but this is by graphical. So in order to get the right info, info, information, compare the mean of these two. Okay, what is the mean between, uh, for example, what is the mean? Okay, wait, here, where's the, where's the, okay. What is the mean difference between uh, uh, the churn based on the credit score? Okay. So you can see here is slightly almost similar, right? Okay, this is what we call as a this is what we call as a group by aggregation. Okay, whereby we can use this node here, group by node. Wait, wait, where is it? Ah, sorry. Okay. Okay, so from the group by node, it summarized that. Okay. Okay, so you can see it's almost similar, the mean value of the credit score for both classes. So in order to confirm that, I perform a st inferential statistic okay, to validate whether, to check whether there is a significant difference between the means of credit score, okay, for churn and stay. So when I do the group independent, independent group details, okay, so you will see that uh, I think we use this result. Okay, so you will see that, okay, this is the result here. The p-value is 0 0.000, 0 0.00, okay, or 0 0.01. Okay, first we check whether we want to select equal variance or not equal variance. So we have to check the Lebit test. If it is greater than 0 0.05, then we use a equal variance. So this is less than 0 0.05. So equal variance are not uh, the equal variance. Uh, no, I mean the not equal of the 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 of the. We found that is still less than zero point zero five. So means that the credit score is affecting. Okay. So the 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 the. Okay. So from the graph, it tell me something, but from the independent group it test, it tell me a different kind of thing. So this is very important as a judgment for us whether we select this or not. Okay, okay, okay. So selection of the variable, then okay, we can uh, 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 then we can proceed for the machine learning. 
So you see here, this is the phase of the machine learning. Okay, in my book, I explain very detail on this. Okay, so at first place, we have to uh, we have to import the data set. So this is the the, the form of the data set that we have here. Okay, okay, this is similar data set that I do on the top one eh? at the top part here for the uh, for the for the uh, exploratory data analysis. Okay, so over here. Okay, after I conduct the EDA, okay, after I do a feature selection, so I found that only these variables, exited score, age, balance, number of product, geography, gender, is active member, are the variable that affecting my model, uh, my, uh, affecting the exited status. Okay, so you see here some of the variables that I select, for example, geography. Okay, geography is not numerical variable, correct? So I have to convert it into a categorical variable. Okay, so I have, uh, sorry, I have to convert this from categorical variable to a numerical variable. So we use a dummy variable in order to do that. Okay, so then that's why we use this one too many node. Okay, sometimes I forget where is the node located, but I remember the name. So what happened? How do you do? So we can search on that here at this, this search box. Okay, one, two, many. It's not, it's not about memorizing the location. It's about whenever you first time use that node, please try to memorize the keyword related to that node. Okay, so you see, this is the node yeah, under column and transform one to many. All right. Okay, so after that, after I do the transformation, so you will see Sorry, that. Sorry, Niklas, just Sorry, Niklas. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Sure. So you see here, uh, from here you will see that the geography will convert it into a dummy variable like this. Okay. This is the dummy variable that been created. Okay. But numeric value, for example, female and male. Okay. You have this numeric value. Then you can proceed for training the algorithm afterwards. Select the variables. Okay, make sure you select all the variables at this phase. Yeah, if let's see here. Okay, all the variables are selected to train the algorithm. Go for partition. I use here is at twenty. So 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 the partition for you to. Uh, which one is going to test set and which one is going to trend set. Okay, so because this data set, data set, data set is under so so stratified, okay? stratified sampling. Okay, stratified sampling for the uh, exit, exit, exit step. To normalize it, before you train, make sure you normalize it individually. In my book, so the importance of uh, this, uh, what we call normalize, before we train the algorithm and we have to normalize it independently between the trend test set and the test set okay so after normalization then we can use that to train the algorithm so this is the algorithm that we can train which is available here available at analytics mining and you can see you can use logistic regression for example i can use naive bayes okay i can use Logistic, for example, logistic is here. I train the algorithm, then I will generate the model here and I can apply it into my predictor node. And from this predictor node, okay, I apply a normalized, normalized test set into this predictor node. Then I will check when my data set is, my model is good or not using a, a, a a confusion metric, sorry. Okay, so this confusion metric. So I can summarize that confusion metric is something like this. Okay, so the position for each classes, the recall of these classes, and even though you can get the overall of accuracy, uh, accuracy of this uh, model. Okay, so thank you very much. I think, uh, yeah, uh, after that, I, I'm sorry because uh, the time is very, very, very limited. We conclude my presentation, okay? So if you are Malaysian, you're able to purchase my book at 70 ringgit, okay? But only for Malaysian. If you are someone from outside Malaysian, you have to purchase it using Amazon, via Amazon. 
Okay, for thirty-eight dollars. Okay, okay, okay. So get a bit info on this for a while. Okay, in the check box. Okay, later I will share in the check box. Okay, so follow my uh, uh, Facebook page. Okay, if you want to know more about uh, data science with me, and then that's it. I think. Thank you very much. Uh, and I pass this time to Shark for continuing the session. Thank you, and have a good day. Yeah. Excellent, uh, Nicholas. Thank yeah. you yeah. so yeah. much for that very yeah. condensed yeah. but uh, concise introduction to machine learning and showing us how you tackle that in Nime. Please have a look at his book. Also, reach out to him on his website, as you see there. Um, I'm going to ask Nicholas to stop sharing his screen now. Nicholas, there's also uh, one or two questions in the chat for it that you can tackle. Um, Roberto, you can also have a look at that. We have a nice question there. Then I want to invite um, our next speaker to the stage, Alvin Lim, who will be introducing himself. And I think he's going to present something on data apps, but uh, he'll tell us more about that. So please um, a reminder again, you're welcome to pop your questions into the chat, into the room. And both speakers will also be available afterwards if you want to have a quick chat with them then. Okay, Alvin, uh, over to you, thanks. Okay, so once again, thank you uh, for the introductions and uh, thank you for this opportunity. And uh, thank you, Dr. Nicholas, the staff for the talk. So um, I'll be continuing the, uh, some, the sharing, some sharing uh, with you on functionality, uh, interactive data vision and functionality with NIME, which is also a continuation uh, from Dr. what Dr. Nicholas uh, presented to you just now. Okay, so let me just introduce myself uh, at the moment. So I'm, uh, I'm a lecturer in uh, University of Tunisia of Malaysia, same, same, same with Dr. Nicholas. So uh, teaching more on civil engineering, but we are also focusing on data science. Okay, so data science and, uh, and programming and also uh, Power BI and all those uh, data science things. Okay, so uh, my background is in civil engineering, and also job technical engineering. However, I'm also a nine uh, trainer and consultant, and also a Power BI trainer and consultant. Okay, so um, similarly with Dr. Nicholas, we do work together, okay, uh, as part of NAPSOFT. So contact me, it's also, uh, you can also contact Dr. Nicholas together. All right, so, Let's start off with what I'm going to present to you. Um, so look, uh, what I did said just now is that NIME is, is able to create uh, visuals. Okay, so visuals using JavaScript. And uh, it is important to use visuals uh, in your exploratory data analysis, EBA, and uh, in also to present your results. Okay, so these are some of uh, the visuals or graphs that can be able to Produced by NIME itself. Okay, so I'll be talking uh, talking more on this. Uh, I'll show you some examples on how we can get it together and we can build something like a dashboard. Okay, so to create visuals, we also need to use uh, nodes. Okay, so nodes, as you as you've, uh, seen before just now, uh, there's no programming or anything. You just need to drag and drop uh, to which nodes you would require for, for your for your presentation or for your analysis. Okay, so you can see here uh, from our data sets, okay, we are able to connect it to certain visuals such as histogram or metrics. Okay, you can see uh, what are the outputs. Okay, so this can be done in the NIME software itself and you can uh, open it and take a look at it uh, individually. Okay, so a typical visual you know, such as histogram, line plots, scatter plots are all different presented okay so the benefits is like we mentioned is uh, enable better understanding during your EDA okay uh, provide a clearer picture of your data uh, better representation and easy to see hidden patterns of your data okay so um, if you look at a table or a, a Excel sheet or something uh, probably it's difficult for you to analyze it and and Come up with results. So, in your exploratory data analysis, uh, it's easy for you to use uh, visualizations and graphs 
to uh, to explore more on the data and see what are the um, uh, are the variables that are important for for example like um, machine learning and, and stuff like that. Okay, so building with visualizations can be uh, complemented with components. Okay, so what is the components? The components is is a, is a a uh, feature or a tool that can help to automate the functionality of the nodes. Okay, so if you are dealing with, uh, let's say, uh, graphics, graphical uh, bar charts and all those things and visualization, uh, it can be made easy by using components to filter out certain variables that you need to uh, you need to find. Okay, that you need to analyze. So uh, components later on, I'll show you that that's some of the demo of this. Okay, so uh, components can also be used to create uh, dashboards. Okay, so what is a dashboard? If, you can, if you, some of you have known, but if you don't know, uh, dashboards is a way of displaying types of visual data in a, in a single place, uh, a high level of view, broad, uh, broad amounts of data, uh, to show comprehensive overview of data from different sources. Okay, so dashboards can be created by uh, very a lot of uh, software that has been uh, that has been around, so such as W, uh, Power BI, Power BI, and also uh, Nine can also be used to create uh, dashboards, such as this with interactive dashboards. So building interactive dashboards require the use of component. Okay, so in the comp in the component, uh, all the nodes are gathered in that component. So in the component, you can see that uh, in the, uh, you can see all of the nodes that are uh, being used, and it is linked to each other. So this this component can be can be um, can be opened up to create a dashboard or a graphical interface for you to analyze and do your uh, EDA, for example. Okay, and. It is beneficial to use dashboards also, which can be presented locally. That means uh, you can just use your computer and uh, open up your Lime software to present your, your dashboard and to present the data. Or it can be accessible to anyone via a web, web browser page. Okay, and how it can this be done is can be deployed uh, in the work, the, the workflow can be deployed in the Lime server. Uh, dashboard pages can be added in the web browser by adding more components. Okay, so every single component will present to you a single web page. Okay, so that is uh, some of the extra features that you can use if you are subscribed to a Lime server. Okay, so uh, let me show you some examples using the uh, Lime software. So here is what you can see, uh, what Dr. Nicholas has shown you about the time software okay um, so this is the this this example would be more specific to uh, visualizations okay creating visualizations and how we use components to make it easy okay what uh, dr nicholas have explained just now was more specific to machine learning and uh, what he mentioned just now also was uh, to perform uh, eda right exploratory data analysis so this can be a, a how to say a, a, a big help on how to uh, make it make you work easier in terms of presenting visuals and also using the component feature. Okay, so what we have here is uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, okay, so this is a it's a data set on let's say a car car sales. Okay, uh, whether they are on based on the fuel type the weight and the age okay so i just want to show you what kind of visuals can be used to represent the data okay for example right okay so we just open up the histogram view we can see this is a histogram view uh, based on the price uh, and what are the prices of the cars okay so and also a scatter matrix plot whether we can see what are the difference okay we can choose between price age and the kilometers you can see what are the uh, what are the correlations that you can find from these graphs okay and also we can actually filter out on what we want to find uh, what we want to see okay for example here we can filter out uh, let's say petrol so we want to see what is the uh, 
results of um, petrol cars. To filter that out, you can use a filter node, yellow filter node. So to filter it out, you can just choose between petrol, diesel, or CNG, okay? CNG is gas. So let's say what diesel is okay, and need to run it again like this. Okay, then we can see here the new results of diesel. So this, this is just an example, simple example to show you uh, what are the features of this um, uh, the, the visualization nodes that can be done. Okay, but this is quite tedious. So to make it easier, you can see that it can be done with a uh, uh, with the use of component here. Okay, so this is a, a data set of something of uh, okay, it's more related to. Uh, the, the customers in the banks, okay, so similar to what Dr. Nicholas has presented. So inside this component, you can see we can actually um, filter the same function as this flow filter, but you can see it can be made easier using this interface where we can choose, uh, for example, countries on which, which countries we would like to show the data, okay. So let's, let's take a look at this um, bar chart. Okay, so this bar chart shows the countries of, of all the countries, okay, and uh, that is representing the amount of their customers or something like that, okay. So if you want to filter out, may, maybe we would like to see countries between US and Germany, uh, and click OK and run it, okay, then we can have a look at what is the chart based on these two countries, okay. So components can make your uh, work easier and uh, it can be done uh, with uh, okay, so if I open up this thing we can have a look what's inside so this is uh, what's inside so it is the use of certain nodes and also flow variables okay flow variables is some sort of a complex feature uh, that, can, that can be used in time where it can generate something like an interface like this buttons for you to press and filter out uh, filter out your data to have a better look at what's inside okay so these are the functions or features of the graphical uh, options so to create dashboards such as this okay we can see from a single csv file let's take a look at what is the data so the data is similar to what dr nicholas has presented uh, for its uh, machine learning purposes so uh, before doing machine learning, we need to, let's say, do some analysis of EDM on it. So you can see what are the data set is uh, presenting to you. If we turn it into a dashboard, okay, we can just click it and we need to uh, click the interactive view. So once you open this up, you can see this, this is a dashboard that, uh, that you can analyze a lot of graphical interface in one page okay so you can see all of the data that has been uh, gathered up together from the data set that dr nicholas presented to you just now okay so either you want to do your analysis or you want to present the data it's up to you okay so uh, it's an interactive dashboard you can actually for example uh, active mem members based on country okay? so these are the active members in in uh, the customers in the, in the bank Okay, whether they stay or return, right? So if for active members, you can see according to the years, you can actually filter out what are the years and you can see what, uh, what is happening on the active members. Okay, so throughout the years, you can see the active members is uh, decreasing. Okay, so there's something to, uh, you, can tell, you can tell you about, right? The active members based on gender, whether you can see the male active members are decreasing from time to time. Okay, so whether they stay or churn, um, you can see throughout the years what are the, if you take a look at the churn, okay, it is uh, decreasing from time to time, okay, and they increase, and slightly decrease, and decrease, so it fluctuates, what about, uh, what about the churn, okay, customers will churn for their, okay, you can see the pattern in how they are uh, based on the years that goes by, okay, so these are things that you can take a look and also how to analyze certain things in our data. Okay, so we can see uh, this is based on what is the age, uh, based on age. Okay, so it's up to you on what you want to 
look at and what we want to analyze. So these are other information as well. You can plot into a single uh, interface that is for your dashboard. Okay. So it's quite informative and quite useful. Uh, even Nine can do it. Not only Nine, but other software. But Nine is very capable of doing this kind of uh, presentation. Okay. So let's take a look what is happening inside of this um, component. So we call this as a component. Component gathers all other uh, nodes into a single place. And what is inside is you can see. Open it up. You can see a lot of nodes that has been used to create those dashboards. Okay, so uh, let's get it up together, right? You can see which of these nodes are represented in the dashboard. Okay, one by one, you can see what, you can actually see the interactive view of it. Okay, you can see each individual graphs inside here and the process leading to the, uh, leading to uh, creating the graphs, okay? So it's not a simple process actually, but it takes uh, understanding and quite complex in what you want to present, okay? So here we can actually um, configure on how our dashboard look like, okay? We can move up and down on the... Uh, so this this represents how your dashboard will look like, okay? So for, for line, this line plot, I put it here. So if I put it up, you can see it moves up another page. So if you click on finish, you can if you go back this, uh, sorry, go back to here, I can just take a look at the link check whether it's uh, okay so I've already uh, placed the graph to uh, above this above this tech chart. Okay so it is easily customizable and uh, it is very um, very simple to use you just need to drag and drop the, those graphs that you want to present and also that you want to maybe uh, look at it and how it is uh, you want to organize it in, the, in a better way okay so this is some of the features uh, what NIME can do and what can help you to do during your analysis uh, and what Dr. Nicholas presented to you just now uh, you can uh, have a better the feature for you to use and to make it uh, simple okay make it simple and uh, make it simple and uh, to ex expedite, expedite your uh, work right uh, okay so i think that's all from me all right so thank you very much uh, you can also uh, contact me uh, and uh, we can have a discussion later on after this session all right so thank you very much Thank you very much, Alvin. Um, that's very important. It's nice linking to, to the first two talks. Obviously, you want to do fancy stuff with your data, maybe with some machine learning, but then people need to consume it. And one of the ways of doing it is building a dashboard and visualizing all these things. Um, uh, Alvin, I think there's one or two questions for you in the chat as well. Uh, we are also inviting all of you to uh, move down to the beach area where there will be, uh, as I mentioned right at the start, two areas where you can either speak to Alvin and Nicholas or some of um, the team members if there's any questions. Also speaking about future events that we can organize within the Data con uh, Connect Malaysia um, region. On the other side of the map, you will also find the Educators Corner. There, Stefan, my colleague, will be there. I will also hang around there if you have any questions regarding teaching uh, NIME at the university or within your company. Give us a, um, a shout out there. Uh, Alvin, I think you can answer one or two questions here, but you're also welcome to move over to, to the area later. Remember, there are some uh, Easter eggs to be found. If you just explore the map, you can find some cheat sheets. Uh, there's also the library where you can download some of our books for free. So make use of that opportunity. Now, if there's any questions, please use the room chat or simply come close to us and switch on your mic uh, and your, and your um, camera if you want to, and we can have a chat. Thank you uh, all for joining. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. Roberto, jump in there. But otherwise, we'll see you in the beach area. Thanks.